My hope for 3D models is that everyone eventually will be able to do it because I think that to any type of researcher, it will add value to the work that they are doing. I think the, the key thing is give it a go, try, see how it works, and then you keep pushing it, see how far it, it moves things on. I think the, the first step is to read about it, which is what we all do as researchers. A lot of people are excited to get into this space, but they just don't know where to start. We have a website that has all the resources for them to read and try to understand what we offer, what we have done. Speak with someone who's doing this, not just reading the papers or speaking with the PI or the people in charge, but the person that is in the lab, inside, at the bench and doing all the work. We can actually come in and do a demo and train them and their labs on our protocol and how to generate the model that they need. So we'll actually do hands-on training. Go for one of these workshops, then there you can interact with people who are at a similar level and experts who have been doing it for a long time. The devil is in the details as we saw today. It's, it depends how much you incline your pipette, how hard you do it just to resuspend the gastroid. So it's really good to have this practical course because then you can really see what could go wrong, what could go right and which little steps are crucial. The people that are new to 3D, we have a couple layers of support. The first and probably easiest is our website. On our website, we have a lot of different resources. There's a 3D cancer webinar series that you can take that's totally free. There's protocols, there's uh, uh, charts with links to various publications out there based on cell type. And then when you're ready to get into it, we have a field application scientist that we can put people in touch with that can really sort of dive into the protocols a bit and answer the questions that you might not get answered uh, easily online.